Well, I made it to Huatulco, but when I was maneuvering in the marina, my overheat alarm went off. So I gotta get the bottom scrubbed, make sure those through hulls are clear. Cause I got a week long Tawanapec weather window I wanna take advantage of. Let me show you this. My name is Rick. I got my sea legs when I was in the Coast Guard and I commanded a boat much like this one. Today, I take my small sailboat on coastal passages in search of adventure. In this season, I'm heading south from Banderas Bay with the intention of returning to the Caribbean Sea via the Panama Canal. We live in the pirate life. First order of business is to get the bottom cleaned. It's been a little while, and I suspect that through hull might be clogged. But I'm going to need to do it quick if I'm going to take advantage of this rare January Tawanapec weather window. This is ideal for me. You can see in this video how high pressure circulating clockwise over Texas is displacing the normal east to west trade winds and pushing those trade winds north, taking all that energy away from Tawanapec. I'm heading into town. Got to check in with the port captain. I could walk all the way into Huatulco, but I'm probably gonna grab a taxi just to make it quicker. It's only like 40 pesos. This cool looking structure to the left was built as a small concert venue, but apparently it's not getting much use. When I was checking in at the port captain's office, I noticed this cool Mexican Coast Guard interceptor, De Nebola. They have another one called Polaris. It's a star class interceptor. I really thought what they did here with the non-skid was cool. You know, in the US Coast Guard, bosun mates will do a similar thing on the non-skid on Coast Guard cutters. And it's an unmistakable sign of the pride that this crew takes in maintaining this vessel. So I've got a diver arranged. My friend Efrain is coming by to clean the hull. So soon I'm gonna know if it's this through hull or if it's something else. Oh yeah, he's got all the tools. Look at that scraper. Oh yeah. Yeah, Marina La Cruz, take a look at how these guys are doing their pilings, the end of their slips. Diamond plate, baby, sturdy. Mm. All right, well, my friend Efrain is coming to the boat and is gonna dive the hull. So soon I'm gonna have some more information and I'll know better whether or not this is just a clogged through hull or if it's something more complicated. Dude, what's that? Oh, clean it out. Yes. Nice. It's okay if I film? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah. And Efrain is going to dive the hull and he's gonna see about this through hull. We're gonna find out if this is the problem or if I have another, maybe more bigger problem. Thank you so much, Efrain. Thank you for your job. Yeah. I'm gonna help you. Ah. And as Efrain slipped below the surface, I have to admit, I was a little apprehensive. It's difficult to see this because it's dirty water. Should I try? See if I can get some water now? Okay. If I can, we can aim. Well, Efrain has cleaned out the through hull and the boat runs great. And so we went outside of the marina and anchored just off this cute little beach so we have better visibility. Uh, and he's cleaning the hull for me. And uh, I just want to give you a look at this beach because it's really amazing. 
Yeah, and we've got company. Got a little catamaran anchored next to me. And laundry never sleeps. Once Efrain is finished, we'll head back into the marina. And I'm gonna take a look at the weather, see if we've still got this weather window. I need like 72 hours to get across. If the weather window looks solid, I'll leave tomorrow morning, but I can't commit to that right now. I also gotta check out with the port captain. So there's uh, some things I have to do before I can uh, actually make this departure, but how was it? Flying this boat. This boat will fly. Yeah, this boat fly. This Thank is the you. name? Frogs leap. Frogs volando. Frogs flying now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amigo. Volando de la rana. Yeah, frogs. <laughs> yeah. Gracias, senor. Thank you, Efrain. This Tawanapec passage wouldn't be possible without your help. So I immediately went to the port captain to check out. And when they heard my plans, oh, they made sure they gave me the latest weather forecast. All right, well, I'm underway from Huatulco. I'm crossing Tawanapec. I'm going the straight route, straight to Chiapas. In uh, beginning of January here, uh, this is not recommended. January is known to be the worst month for passing the Gulf, but in this manner, uh, normally you want to keep one foot on shore, and uh, I'm not doing that because the weather window looks good. I trust my ability to uh, read the weather, so we'll see if uh, that trust is well placed. Yeah, goodbye Huatulco. It was a short trip, short visit, but enjoyable nonetheless. Well, I think one of the reasons I can say it was enjoyable was because I got to get the, the hull cleaned. I mean, really well done. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was good to have that overheating issue manifest itself as I was coming in rather than when I'm leaving. Uh, so, you know, you have to count your blessings. And uh, I got a, that was an opportunity to really do a, a once over on the entire cooling system before making this leap across to Wanapec. Things happen for a reason, I guess. Well, I'm about maybe an hour and a half into the transit, and so far so good. I just want to give you a look at this sea state. So far so good. If it can hold like this, I'll be in good shape. You might say, well, there's no wind, Rick. How can it be good? You're motoring. That's true. I mean, I'd rather be sailing, but to Wanapec is notorious for gales. And they pick up out of nowhere. There's so much room for fetch through that isthmus that I'm thankful for no wind. I'll motor this whole darn thing across here if that's what it takes. Take a look at it, you know, Google Tawanapecker, Tawanapecker. Take a look at like what months are the worst. January is known to be the worst. So I'm not worried about not sailing. I do think I will be sailing before too long probably in the next few hours. And uh, all I, I'm just hoping that it doesn't get out of control because uh, that's the risk. And you know, here I am in January, the worst month to, to, to cross this, to try to cross the Gulf of Tawanapec. And you know, that's the situation I'm in. So it is what it is, man. I'll take this, absolutely. Well, I'm at the end of the first day uh, of this Tawanapec crossing. It's been something else. Um, you know, predicted winds were anywhere between 8 and 15 knots. I'm getting over 20. Uh, sea state, even on the weather that uh, the Mexican Coast Guard gave me, they said 5 to 7 feet. I mean, it's bigger than that. They say the boat can take more than the human can. So, But that's why I'm in the companionway. I got my elbows here as I film this. It's holding me steady in the companion way. But I'm going to shoot this. I got a great shot of this sunset uh, from the companion way. And I'm going to shoot it because you know that's what I do. I'm the sunset guy.
So I'm running uh, reef main and staysail just to bring the center of effort closer to the boat because I've got the seas right on the starboard beam and the wind as well. So, you know, it's easy to overextend yourself on a small boat like this. Uh, I mean, I feel like a knockdown is, is totally within the cards. So, you know, the wind speeds that were forecasted for today were not that accurate. I would say they were low by at least five knots, probably six or seven. So, and the sea state too was under understated. So days like today, probably nights like tonight, are really just about. not moving a lot and, and not being too active because you're going to injure yourself and you know as a single hander the way she gets what she wants if I give it to her and uh, I have to be physically able to do that so I can't rely on anyone else there's nobody else on board so on you know days like today nights like tonight get inside and don't move around a lot because if you get injured you aggravate whatever problems you think you have Sure. Well, it's the morning of day two, and uh, wow, I'm pretty much in the middle of Tawanapec here, and uh, it's calm. So, I mean, it won't stay this way. There's wind. Uh, it's not much, but I mean, I'm reading six knots apparent, so it's there. I'm going, I'm going uh, three and a half. So, motoring for three and a half. But uh, yeah. I'll take it because yesterday was a day of survival, you know? You want to just, <laughs> I just hung out in the V-Birth and uh, didn't move a lot because those days, the risk of injury is too great. Yeah. But take a look at this. This is, this is a, uh, uh, it's a welcome sight because I need to recollect my energy. <laughs> when I left on this, Tawanapec crossing. I knew that January is historically the worst month to try it. And so what that means is it's not that you can get in a worse storm. It's just that in terms of the number of days that you have available to get weather like this, they're few and far between. And even when the weather window looks good, Maybe you're going to get one day like this. To be honest, I'll be happy if I get only a half a day like this. So I can make some breakfast and get some nourishment in me. Because I didn't make any food, really. I had snacks, but no real meals. You know, I'll motor this whole way. Because if there are waves like there was, they're not going to let you sail in a small boat like this. Because you're going to pound. You're going to hobby horse. You're going to pound. And it's going to take all the way off. I'm still a little bit early for sunrise, but uh, I'm looking forward to it because I'm actually going to be able to film it. Last Yesterday, uh, I didn't do a lot of filming. I kind of just protected myself, protected my health. I don't think I came out to try to shoot any, any of the weather until around sunset. And that was just like a, a token effort because I didn't like being up even at all <laughs> yeah I mean most people don't do what I'm doing in a 27 foot boat and if you're in a bigger boat you, you don't feel it as pronouncedly I'm becoming very fond of telling people that you know when you're on a small boat it's not wine and cheese sailing it's much more appropriate to call these you know doing what I'm doing it's a heck of a lot more akin to something maybe that would be called survival sailing. Yeah, I'm not like one of these guys that's chasing bad weather or anything like that, you know, for shock value. But I am trying to do more with less. There's no question about that. 
It's funny to hear myself say that because it's something we used to say in the Coast Guard all the time. In comparison to all the other branches of service, the Coast Guard's funding is, I mean, so small. So it's just hilarious to hear me say more with less. In the Coast Guard, we used to say, well, we, we've gotten so good at doing more with less, we can pretty much do everything with nothing. <laughs> and it's weird because here I am doing it again. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know if it becomes part of you or, I don't think so. I think it's just the situation I find myself in. But. Oh yeah, sun's getting ready to peek out over the horizon now. Looks like there's a little bit of cloud cover down there, but man. Whew. I'm right, I'm not smack in the middle of Tawanapik, but I'm close. That's just amazing. All right, so it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and I gotta take you out here to the cockpit because this is crazy. Flat ass calm, baby, look at that. I mean, wow. Unbelievable. I am right smack dab in the middle of the Gulf of Tawanapec. Crossing it the way you're not supposed to do it, you know? One foot on the beach. That's what they say. Now, nope, cut straight across. I might have to name this episode The Taming of Tawanapec. Woo! the end of day two frogs leap crossing the gulf of tawanapec oh yeah it's time for that sunset well there's the seas coming up uh, on the port quarter and the wind really nice because it's pushing me right along towards Chiapas it's totally favorable and the seas are not that huge I mean I think maybe two to three feet right now occasionally maybe there's a four footer yeah I'd say something like that
right, I'm about oh, an hour and a half from entering uh, Chiapas Channel. And I'm uh, going to be entering it and getting to the marina right about sunset. I'm thinking I'm going to go in there, uh, see if there's someone there, maybe a security guy who can direct me to a slip that's free. Otherwise, I'm just going to take one. Uh, and they can move me when they get a chance. But uh, let's try to get a slip right here at sunset on a Sunday. It's going to be sketchy, uh, you know. <laughs> As I began to approach the Chiapas Inlet, I was running up against a hard stop, sunset. The canal that leads to the marina really can't be navigated at night. It's only about 50 feet wide, and it's not very well lit. As it turns out, I got in just enough time to catch a little golden hour. For real-time updates, check out Sailing Frog's Leap on Instagram.